As the title and thumbnail of this video suggest, this video will be on ADHD. We will cover all the ins and outs, I will give you some tips and tricks for dealing with it and we will cover some common treatment options. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any valuable information. For those of you meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewers, because educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this channel. This video also comes with a quick disclaimer, it's meant purely informative, this is not medical advice and when looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. And now quickly, let's get started. So as promised, I will start by explaining exactly what ADHD is. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and when googling it, you will find the following definition. ADHD is one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders of childhood. It is usually first diagnosed in childhood and often lasts into adulthood. Children with ADHD have troubles paying attention, controlling impulsive behaviors, may act without thinking about what the results will be, or be overly active. In the DSM-5, the most used diagnostic manual for mental health disorders, ADHD is defined as following. It specifies that people with ADHD experience inattention and or hyperactivity, which interferes with their functioning and or development. And in order to be diagnosed with ADHD, at least five of the following symptoms of inattention should have been present in the last six months. Someone with ADHD often fails to pay attention to details, makes careless mistakes, has trouble holding attention, does not seem to listen, does not follow instructions through, has trouble organizing, dislikes or avoid tasks that may require mental effort, often loses things, is easily distracted and is forgetful. In addition, at least five of the following hyperactivity or impulsivity symptoms should also have been present in the last six months. Someone with ADHD often fidgets or taps with his or her hands or feet, leaves the seat when it is expected to remain seated, runs or climbs in situations where this is inappropriate, can't play quietly, talks excessively, blurts out an answer before a question has been completed, has trouble waiting on his or her turn, and interrupts or intrudes on others. Furthermore, to complete the diagnosis of ADHD, several of these symptoms should have been present before the age of 12, they should have been present in at least two or more settings, so at home, at work or at school time. The symptoms must clearly interfere with someone's social, school or work functioning and these symptoms can only be explained by ADHD and not by another mental disorder. And now you might wonder, how is ADHD caused? It's thought to be a neurodevelopmental disorder that causes some changes in your dopamine levels and several brain structures. However, the precise cause is not understood yet, although recent studies have shown that there is an interaction between certain genetics and several environmental factors. Genetics are thought to cause 75% of all cases. As siblings of someone with ADHD are three to four times more likely to develop ADHD themselves in comparison to siblings of children without ADHD. And the following environmental factors can also increase someone's risk to develop ADHD. Alcohol intake during pregnancy, smoking during pregnancy, a premature birth, a low birth weight, extreme neglect, abuse or social deprivation can also increase the risk on developing ADHD. Which brings us to the question, how common is ADHD? From recent research, we learned that this might depend on the country you live in or even the region you live in. As globally, it can differ between two to 7%, but averagely, it's about 5%. Next up, we will discuss the treatment plans. But before we do so, it is important to note that if you do experience any of the symptoms we previously mentioned, or if you do think you're suffering from ADHD, and always discuss this with your personal doctor. He or she can help you to find out the extent of your symptoms, may explore any underlying causes, provide you with tips and tricks, and if needed, set up a treatment plan. Your doctor might do this by asking about your current symptoms, your medical history, and the medication you're using. Furthermore, he or she might do a physical examination or some blood tests to rule out any other underlying conditions. If necessary, your doctor could then refer you to a mental health professional depending on the underlying problem and the causes. 
as getting treatment as soon as possible could prevent your symptoms from worsening. Now, before I go on to provide you with some tips and tricks and a possible treatment plan, make sure to like the video if you find value in this information. It cost me a lot of effort to do all the research for this video and a like would be greatly appreciated. Now then, in order to overcome these symptoms, it is important that you are in the best shape possible, physically, but also mentally. And you do this by maintaining a structured day schedule, getting enough sleep between seven to nine hours each night, do not sleep during the day, eat enough vegetables and vitamins, drink about two liters of water each day, exercise regularly, and maintain regular contacts with your loved ones. In addition, you could also try the following tips. Maintain as much structure as possible in your day and the activities you're doing. Break tasks into manageable pieces. Limit distractions. Exercise regularly. Try thinking out loud, which can help you focus your thinking process. Try to pause a moment before talking or replying. Take sufficient breaks during tasks and always try to stay calm. Now, if your doctor does deem therapy necessary, it is important to note that ADHD can be managed with proper treatment. However, sometimes it can be quite hard to find the correct treatment for you. There are many different treatment options and what work can differ per person and per family. Usually treatment is multidisciplinary, consisting out of several healthcare providers, therapists, teachers, coaches, and or family members. And in most cases, it is advised to combine psychotherapy with medication. Medication does not provide a long-term cure for ADHD, but it can help to reduce its symptoms, improve your concentration, and improve your functioning in daily life. Commonly prescribed medicines for ADHD are methylphenidate, lisdexamphetamine, dexamphetamine, atomoxetine, and huonfacin. Which brings us to psychotherapy, also called talk therapy. There are many different forms of psychotherapy. Some can be followed individually, while others are followed in group setting. In psychotherapy, the underlying psychological problems and the behaviors are addressed with the aim to overcome these. It usually lasts 6 to 12 weeks, but can be a lot longer. A common form of talk therapy is psychoeducation. Here, ADHD and its effects are discussed in order to provide more insights on its impact, which may help to improve someone's coping. Next up, someone could follow cognitive behavioral therapy or behavioral therapy. This can help to reduce certain behavior. The goal of this therapy is to learn and strengthen positive behavior and eliminate unwanted and problematic behavior. Lastly, also parenting training and education programs might be helpful. Now, it's best to discuss all these treatments with your personal doctor to see which one might fit best in your personal situation. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer each and every one of your questions. And for those of you that want to keep on learning, check out the playlist in the description with more medical videos on mental health problems. Because educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this video and this entire channel. If you did learn something, if you found this video useful, please leave a like. This will help out the channel tremendously and consider subscribing. I'm posting weekly medical videos, which might be a benefit of you. And by subscribing, you can help me reach help me to reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Thank you all so much. Great thanks to my Patreon supporters as well. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an investor tea supporter. And for those of you interested, I also have an Instagram account at How to Medicate, posting there a few times a week for the, of those of you that, that want to check it out as well. And as always, I will see you next week with a new video. Bye-bye.